हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर काउसर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेशन टू ऑफ सिस्टम सॉफ्टवेयर एंड ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम कोर्स द टॉपिक ऑफ सेशन टू इज सिंप्लीफाइड इंस्ट्रक्शनल कंप्यूटर्स एंड इट्स आर्किटेक्चर फर्स्ट लेट आई सी द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ एस आई सी मशीन आर्किटेक्चर एंड इट्स कॉम्पोनेंट्स द टर्म एस आई सी स्टैंड फॉर सिंप्लीफाइड इंस्ट्रक्शनल कंप्यूटर्स which is an hypothetical computer that has hardware features which are often found in real machines there are two versions of this sic machine architecture the first version is the standard model of sic and the second one is an xc version that is sic xc version where xc stands for extra equipments or extra expensive object program for sic can be properly executed on sic xc which is known as upward compatibility the two versions have been designed to be upward compatible when we have to understand about different components or architecture of the sic machine the major component of any machine particularly the sic machine is memory so the memory component in an sic machine is byte addressable that is words are addressed by location of their lowest numbered byte there are 2 to the power of 15 bytes in computer memory and we know that one byte is nothing but 8 bits and memory consists of 8 bit bytes and also three consecutive bytes constitute one word which is nothing but 24 bits there are a total of 32768 bytes which is 32 kilobytes in the computer memory of sic machine architecture the next component of sic machine architecture is registers there are five registers in sic every register has an address associated with it known as register number size of each register is 3 bytes five registers with 24 bits in length are present in an sic machine architecture the first register is a with the register number 0 here a stands for accumulator and this accumulator register is used for mathematical operations the second register is x register which has number 1 this x register is index register which is used for addressing the third register is l register with number 2 which is linkage register also called j sub it is used to store and return address of instruction in case of subroutines the fourth register is pc register with register number 8 which pc stands for program counter this register holds the address of next instruction to be executed the last or fifth register of sic machine architecture is the sw register with register number 9 sw stands for status word which is condition code register it contains variety of information and this information can be seen in the figure 2.2 below the status word register consists of various information we can as seen in the figure 2.2 the first information is mode this mode bit refers to user mode or supervising mode if it is in user mode the value is 0 and if it is in supervising mode the value is 1 and uh, this particular information occupies one bit and the value or the address is 0 and the next information is the state information this state bit refers to whether process is in running state or it is in idle state if it is 0 then it is said to be in running state if the value is 1 then it is said to be in idle state and it also occup occupies one bit like the mode uh, information and the memory address of the state uh, bit is 1 and the next information bit is id bit this refers to process id pid and it occupies 3 bits of memory and therefore the address or the location of this id bit is uh, ranges from 3 to 5 and the next information is the cc bit information which refers to condition code this tells us whether device is ready or not and it occupies 2 bits of memory and those bits are 6 and 7 and the next bit is the mask mask bit which refers to interrupt mask and it occupies 4 bits 8 to 11 
The next information in the status word register is X which refers to unused bit. It also occupies 4 bits like the mask bit and uh, the value ranges from 12 to 15 in the sense the position 12, 13, 14 and 15 are occupied by the X uh, bit information. And then last information of the status word register is the I code information which refers to interrupt code that is interrupt service routine. It occupies the remaining bits that is 16 to 23. So this is about the information uh, relating to the status word register of the SIC architecture. So with this we have learnt about memory and also about the registers and the next component of the SIC architecture is the data formats. Here integers are stored as 24 bit binary numbers and two's complement representation is given for negative values and characters are stored using 8 bit ASCII codes. Here the SIC machine architecture does not support floating point on the hardware. So this uh, is about the data format information on uh, SIC machine architecture and the next component of SIC architecture is the instruction format. All instructions in SIC have 24 bit format. There are two addressing modes available indicated by X bit in the instruction. X represents the contents of register X. X is equal to 0 means it is direct addressing mode. If X is equal to 1 it means it is indexed addressing mode. And this is shown in figure 2.3. The instruction cycle of the SIC machine architecture has the following. It has CPU, control unit, arithmetic logic unit, the register, instruction cycle, fetch cycle and execution cycle. This is uh, figure 2.3 relating to instruction format of SIC. Here you can see if it is in direct mode x value is 0 and the target address is equal to just the address. When it is indexed mode addressing then the indication uh, for x will not be 0 but 1 and uh, to calculate the target address you will have to add the address along with the x bit. So the opcode occupies 8 bits of memory. The x bit occupies 1 that is it can have value either 0 or 1 and the address part needs 15 bits of information. So the next component of SIC architecture is the instruction set. Here the format 3 of instruction set has uh, registers uh, for uh, load and uh, store. Oh, LDA, LDX is for load that is uh, load into accumulator, load into X and uh, ST and STX are store registers for storing into accumulator and storing into the register X. And the next format is for integer arithmetic operations. Here uh, you have uh, uh, three character in instructions like add, sub, mul and division which perform various arithmetic operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And for comparison you have one instruction called COMP which, which compares the left hand side with the right hand side. And the next type of uh, instruction set is conditional jump instruction. Uh, with uh, the instruction being JLT, JEQ and JGT. And you also have JSUB which jumps to the subroutine placing the written address in register to L and also RSUB which returns by jumping to the address contained in register L. Coming to the last part of the SIC machine architecture component that is input output input output operations are performed by transferring one byte at a time to or from the rightmost 8 bits of register A. Each device is assigned a unique 8 bit code as an operand. There are three input output instructions. The first instruction is TD test device instruction which tests whether device is ready or not. Uh, this can also be checked by the condition code bit of the status word register. If uh, CC is less then the device is ready otherwise device is busy. And the next uh, input output instruction is RD read data instruction which reads a byte from device and stores in register A. The last input output uh, instruction is uh, WD which is write data 
which writes a byte from register A to the device. So with this we have learnt about the various uh, components, the six components of SIC architecture. Now let us compare the same six components with uh, another uh, SIC architecture that is the SIC XC machine architecture. Like already discussed, we know that SIC XC stands for Simplified Instructional Computer Extra Equipment or Simplified Instructional Computer Extra Expensive. So this computer uh, is an advanced version of SIC that is why the extra equipment or the extra expensive. Both SIC and SIC XC are closely related and uh, they are designed uh, to be upward compatible. So let us see the first component of the SIC XC architecture that is uh, memory. So even here the memory consists of 8 bit bytes and the memory size is uh, more, much more than the SIC architecture that is 1 megabytes which is 220 bytes. Standard SIC memory is very small when compared to the SIC XC architecture and this change in memory size leads to the change in instruction formats as well and also the addressing modes. Even here 3 consecutive bytes form a word in SIC XC architecture. All address is byte address and words are addressed by the location of their lowest numbered byte just like SIC architecture and uh, there is 1 megabytes in the memory that is 1024 kilobytes. So coming to the register part in SIC XC architecture, we learned that in SIC architecture there are 5 registers. On the other hand in SIC XC architecture it contains 9 registers, the 5 SIC registers plus 4 additional registers for SIC XC. Uh, let's see about uh, let's uh, see what these four additional registers are and all these registers are also 24 bits in length just like the SIC registers. The special registers that are uh, used in uh, SIC XC architecture is the B, S, T and F register. The base register with address with the number th uh, 3 is the base register which is used for addressing. And the S register with the number 4 is the general working register. And the T register with number 5 is general working register, one additional register with 48, which is 48 bits in length. That is the 24 bits plus the additional 24 bits which constitutes to 48 bits in length. And uh, there is an additional register which helps in floating point uh, representation which is called full floating point accumulator which is also of 48 bits in length and the register number of F is 6. So moving on to the third component of SIC XC architecture the data formats. So even here the integers are represented by binary numbers which is of 24 bit and 2's complement is used for negative values and characters are represented using ASCII codes. Floating points are represented using 48 bits as shown in figure 2.4. The exponent is between 0 to 2047 which sets all bits to 0. So here the only difference between SIC and SIC XC is the floating point representation is also represented in SIC XC architecture whereas in the SIC the floating point values cannot be represented. So here in the figure 2.4 we can see the floating point representation which uses 48 bits information. The S bit consists of 1 and the exponent takes 11 bits and the fractional part takes 36 bits of memory. Coming to the instruction formats, the SIC XC architecture there are 4 types of formats available. The bit E is used to distinguish between format 3 and format 4. If E is equal to 0 means format 3 and E is equal to 1, 1 means it is of format 4. Relative addressing extend the address to 20 bits. Format 4 E is equal to 1 and formats 1 and 2 don't refer to memory at all and this can be illustrated in figure 2.5. So here the format 1 takes only 1 byte of memory where uh, all the 8 uh, bits are occupied by the operand then in format 2 it has 2 bytes where 8 bits are given for the operand and uh, 
the four remaining eight bits are divided between R1 and R2. The format 3 consists of three bytes where six bits are for operand and N, I, X, B, P, E are for various operations which uh, occupy one bit each and uh, DISP takes 12 bits of information and the format 4 consists of 4 bytes where OP takes 6 bits of information and uh, NIXBPE just like the format 3 take 1 uh, bit each followed by 20 bits for the address part. So here the format 1 ha uh, occupies 8 bits, format 2 16 bits, format 3 takes 24 bits and finally the format 4 occupies 32 bit space. Coming to the addressing modes, in SIC we had seen only direct and indirect addressing. Here to use format 3 we have to use the base register as well as the program counter as uh, seen in the figure below. NIX, BPE are different registers which are used. N stands for indirect mode, I stands for immediate addressing and X stands for index addressing. B is used for base addressing, P is the program counter, E is for exponential addressing. So the addressing mode could be simple, immediate or indirect. In case of simple, then the register N has value 0, I, has, I also has value 0 or it could contain the value 1. N and I both the register can take the value 1. In immediate addressing mode, N has value 0, I has value 1 and TA has values. In indirect addressing mode, N has value 1, I has value 0 and TA has an operand. So this is uh, the various mode of addressing. If it is uh, base relative, then B is equal to 1, P is equal to 0. And the target address can be calculating you calculated using B plus the displacement value. The program count if the mode is program counter relative, then B register B has value 0, P has value 1, and the TA can be calculated using the program counter value plus the displacement value. Coming to the instruction set of SIC XC architecture, all the instructions are same as that of SIC architecture but because of the floating point data format, it provides floating point arithmetic functions too. Functions used to perform floating point arithmetic operations are add f, sub f that is add addition for floating point, sub f is subtraction for floating points, mul f is multiplication for floating point div f is for division of floating points and also an additional uh, instruction called svc which is supervisor call is also provided in sicxc architecture to handle the interrupts finally the last uh, component of the sicxc architecture is the input and output the sicxc architecture includes uh, input output channel that allow to perform input output operations while cpu is executing other tasks it will allow overlapping of computing and input output which makes this architecture more efficient than only the SIC architecture. Then it supports instructions such as SIO, TIO, HIO that is SIO is used to start, TIO is for test and HIO is for halt the operation of input output channels. Uh, with this we come to end of session 2 of this uh, course. And in this session, we have learnt about the SIC and also the SIC XC machine architecture and also the various components. And uh, we learnt uh, in brief a uh, kind of comparison between the SIC and also the SIC XC architecture. And we learnt how SIC XC architecture is better than the SIC architecture. Thank you all for your patient listening.